What is going on guys? This is Crozen and welcome back to another BG3 build. This time we are going to take a look at the honor mode build that I used in my run and that is the dual wield dual crossbow build and it's basically a ranged or a melee build you can use both and we're going to be dual wielding all of the time with this build so you know dual wielding two swords dual wielding hand crossbows and yeah I think that this was the build that did the most damage on my honor mode run and I used Minthara for this and she just wrecked everything and a lot of people like to go for the swords bard and thief for their dual crossbow build that build is great I wanted something a little different so we're gonna go with the fighter for this one and that way we can CC with the maneuvers you know that whether we're knocking the enemies back or we're knocking them prone or we're disarming them we're also going to add in a really high critical hit chance with this build and that way we can combine it with a frighten that'll frighten all enemies around you know the enemy that you critically hit so there's a lot of things going on with this build a lot of nice CC and support but still doing crazy damage. So let's get into making the dual wield, dual crossbow build. So for our starting class and abilities, we are going to start with the fighter. And for the fighting style, we're going to go with two weapon fighting, as this will add our ability modifier to the damage of our offhand attack. Archery is another good fighting style here, especially if you're only going to use dual crossbows. If that's the case, then just go for archery instead. For our abilities, we really only have one primary ability here, and that is dexterity. So if you have the hags here, then you probably want to start with 17 dexterity, as that'll get you to 18, and then you'll only need one feat in order to get to 20 dexterity. Otherwise, if you do not have access to the hags here, then you can start with 16 dexterity and one ability improvement will get you to 18 that way. And everything else, uh, they're really just secondary ability points. Um, you know, I went for constitution. That way we have some nice uh, buffy HP here. But, you know, you could always settle for maybe 14 constitution if you want to raise up your charisma and have your character be a better party face. But... Um, yeah, uh, I feel like this is really where we want to be here. Uh, 10 intelligence, 10 wisdom, that way we don't have any negatives to those saving throws. And 12 charisma for, you know, decent uh, dialogue checks. And for the skill proficiencies, we are going to select athletics and intimidation. Now we could focus on our level path, going all the way up to level 12. And the level path is pretty simple, at least early on. All we're going to do is go five straight levels into a fighter in order to get the extra attack. Uh, so once you hit level three, this is when you could select the subclass. We are going to go with Battle Master, and that way we get three maneuvers at level three. What I like to go for here is I go for disarming attack. I also pick up trip attack and I pick up repost. Um, basically, this will give you not only the ability to disarm enemies, but also knock them prone. And then whenever they attack you, you could counter that with a repost. So I feel like those are pretty nice to have, especially this early in the game at level 3. At level 4, we get our first feat. And what I like to do here is just go for ability improvement and start raising up my dexterity. You should be getting close towards getting the hags hair. This will get you up to 20 dexterity. Otherwise, if you started with 16 dex, you will have 18 here. The only other one that I could recommend here would be dual wielder, especially if you want to wield the Falar Aluv weapon early on in the game, as that is a longsword. And I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, by the way. But uh, yeah, that's a really good weapon. It's going to do some really nice damage early on in the game. But other than that weapon, um, you're really not going to get much use out of the dual wielder feat here. Most of the better weapons, once you start getting into Act 2, are going to be short swords. And uh, that's the ones that we're going to be using with this build, actually. So, um, unless you're a mage, <laughs> dual wielder uh, really isn't that great. So, I really wouldn't worry too much about it unless you want that one particular weapon. So now that you hit level 5, you get the extra attack, which is great. So what I would recommend that you do is level up one more time in a fighter. Get it to fighter level 6. This way you can get your second feat. And what you want to do here is go for sharpshooter. Around this level, you should be near Act 2 or in Act 2. And you should be getting close towards getting that risky ring. And when you combine that up with sharpshooter, 
Um, you won't really have too much of a problem with the minus five penalty to the attack rolls because you will have advantage on all of your attacks. So now that we're level seven, what we want to do is multi-class into a rogue and we're going to level up a rogue for three straight levels in order to get to the thief subclass. This way we will have two bonus actions which will pair up really nicely with our dual wielding. And then for the abilities, if this is your main character, what I would recommend doing is go for persuasion. That way uh, you get some nice bonuses to your persuasion checks. And then also go for athletics, that way you can resist being shoved. Um, this is really important since we only have 9 strength. So our goal now is just to keep on leveling in a rogue. So we're going to keep going again. Um, get to rogue level 3, that way you unlock the thief subclass. And then for level 10, this is where we want to go ahead and multi-class into a Warlock. And we're only going to select one level in Warlock, and we want to get the Great Old One subclass, because this will give you Mortal Reminder, uh, which means that every time you land a critical hit, enemies have to succeed a Wisdom saving throw or they will become frightened. So even if they succeed that saving throw quite often, um, it's still going to be really good because we're going to have such a high critical hit chance that, you know, it's going to happen eventually where they're going to get frightened. So um, for the spells here, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Remember, we're not a spell caster. Uh, you could just get Hellish Rebuke for a little bit of extra damage. Uh, maybe Hex here as well. Um, same for the cantrips. Wouldn't worry too much about it, although Minor Illusion can be useful outside of combat. Uh, so you could just go for that and just pick up Eldritch Blast while you are here. So at level 11, what we want to do is go back into a fighter. I know a rogue sounds nice here because you can get that extra feat, but a fighter is just going to give you more and we're still going to get the feat at level 12 because we're still going to gain extra superiority dice, which means more maneuvers, and we can select two extra maneuvers here. So what I would do is I would select menacing attack and also pushing attack. Um, at this point, it's really up to you, but yeah, I really like pushing attack here because you could really knock them back or knock them off of cliffs or whatever, and you don't have to be in melee range either thanks to our crossbows. So um, yeah, and then menacing attack, that just adds an extra fright in. Um, like I said, there's a lot of options here. You could even go for distracting strike, which means uh, that you can give your allies advantage on their next attack roll against that target, which is also a really nice feature to have here. Finally, we hit level 12 and we get our third feat. Uh, at this point, you have two options here. Assuming that you have 20 dexterity thanks to the hag's hair, then you should go for a savage attacker here and that way your melee dual wielding attacks will get a nice little boost in damage. The other option is if you didn't have the hag's hair, you started with 16 dexterity, you could go here and uh, get your dexterity to 20. Um, really, you can't go wrong with either option. I think that uh, Savage Attacker though is going to maybe give you a better boost in damage and uh, you could certainly get by with only 18 dexterity on this build. Um, that's actually what I did with Minthara, I just used uh, gloves of dexterity on her. So um, yeah, either one works here, but I would recommend going for Savage Attacker. Next up, we could take a peek at the gear setup here, and there were really a few things that I wanted to get out of this build. I wanted a very high critical hit chance, but I also wanted to have advantage on all of my attacks. So um, that means we need to rush for Risky Ring as soon as we can in Act 2. This will give us advantage, and yeah, most of the gear here, um, you could really get half of it in Act 2. So, uh, you know, you're, you're not really going to... It's a need to be in Act 3 to get most of these items, other than a few that will give us, uh, you know, better critical hit chance and, and so forth and a little bit of extra damage. But yeah, a Cerebox Horn Helmet here for the critical hit chance. The Death Stalker Mantle, this is a really nice Dark Urge item that you get. Um, become Invisible after you kill an enemy, which, you know, you're going to get that kill most of the time uh, versus the rest of your companions with this build, uh, thanks to just the high damage. Uh, armor of Agility for the full Dexterity modifier to our armor class. Helldust Gloves for the additional weapon attack damage. But also, you get a bonus to Spell Save Difficulty class, which is going to work well with our Frighten on the critical hits and our maneuvers. But then, uh, the Spell Attack Rolls also counts for Attack Rolls too. So, you know, that's just going to make your hit chance a little bit better. 
Disintegrating Night Walkers for Misty Step, Amulet of the Devout for the plus two bonus to spell save difficulty class, then Risky Ring, as I mentioned, you want to go for this as early as you can, Caustic Band for the additional damage on each attack. For the hand crossbows, we're going to go with both crossbows that have a plus two weapon enchantment, so Hellfire Hand Crossbow from Act 2 and Hand Crossbow plus two from Act 3. I think these are the only hand crossbows that have a plus two weapon enchantment on them, so I just went for those. And then for our melee weapons, uh, we're going to go with the Justicier Scimitar in our main hand, and every time we attack with advantage, we can blind the target. Uh, it's a really nice ability, a nice, nice little passive ability. And then you also have a really good ability that you can use every short rest with Shadow Soaked Blow, uh, which will give you some nice boost in your damage every time you use that. Knife of the Undermountain King that you get in Act 1. Um, you could ride this weapon all the way till the very end of the game. It's just a really good weapon to have, especially on a dual wielding build or a critical hit build. Now, if you want a different setup, um, what you could do once you get to Act 3, um, you could put Knife of the Undermountain King in your main hand and go for Bloodthirst in your offhand, and this will give you even more of a critical hit chance. So, um, especially if you're uh, using uh, hand crossbows, I mean, this is the, the setup that I would use here. That way you get uh, improved critical from both of these melee weapons on top of the helmet. But yeah, that is how we are going to gear our character. So now we could take a look at a combat showcase featuring the dual wield, dual crossbow build. And generally, you're going to start first, thanks to your 20 dexterity. And rather than use your maneuvers and, you know, just do single target damage, if you've got a bunch of enemies that are grouped up like this, use arrow of many targets. So anytime you see a vendor that supplies these, make sure that you buy them out because uh, that is going to be your main AoE attack with this build. So... Um, arrow mini targets is great because it applies the damage bonus of sharpshooter on every enemy so it's still going to do really good damage with sharpshooter and yeah maybe we could get a critical here and frighten all of these enemies thanks to our warlock dip so let's go ahead and try this uh, we got a critical on this guy but not the initial attack so um, anytime you do an attack you're going to be able to react with a sneak attack once you have risky ring and what I would recommend doing is saving this until you get a critical to maximize your damage. Obviously, if it's your last attack on the turn, then just use it. Don't waste it. But try to hold out until you get a critical hit. So we're not going to react to that. And we just frightened all four of these enemies, which is really nice. So uh, the melee ones here just can't do anything for the next turn. We might as well just use it again. So let's go right back into it. Uh, let's go for the one that has the most health. And we still did not get a critical, so I'm just not going to react there. So now what we can do is target the archers, since they can still get an attack off. So we'll go ahead and take that archer out. And now let's go and take this one out as well. And now we just frightened uh, this guy too. So yeah, I just love that ability, especially on a critical hit build. Like it's it's almost essential for me to do a one level warlock dip. So now let's go ahead and use action surge. We get two more attacks here. And uh, I think what I'm gonna do is maybe attack this enemy. Uh, we could use uh, some some melee. So let's get our melee going here. So I'm gonna use shadow soaked blow from the Justicier Scimitar. So let's go ahead and do that. Maybe we could blind this enemy. And that is perfect. So not going to react there. We got one more attack now. So on the next sneak attack, I, I obviously have to do it. So um, might as well go for a little bit of extra damage. So uh, let's just try menacing attack on this guy here. And at this point, we might as well use the sneak attack. And yeah, that's really not bad for a first turn. I mean, we 
we basically cc'd three enemies here and you know this archer here is blinded <laughs> so uh yeah that's uh it's not bad so now we're in turn two and the good news is that none of my party took any damage from the first turn thanks to the amazing cc from this build so yeah, this build just worked out so well for me in honor mode, and yeah, I'm just really happy to share this one with you guys. So at this point, we just gotta clean up. So let's go ahead and use an offhand attack on this enemy. Uh, unfortunately, I would get a worthless critical there, which probably means I'm not gonna get a critical for the rest of this fight. But yeah, at this point, uh, let's go ahead for another arrow of many targets, and we should be able to hit all three of these enemies here. And I'm glad I got another critical, because I really didn't think I would. Uh, wow, one health. One health. That sucks. But, yeah, he's uh, CC'd anyway. Frightened. He's not going to be able to do anything. So, we might as well move over here and start targeting this enemy. Um, I might go for a disarming attack. Hopefully, I could disarm this enemy, which is great. Um, I'm not going to react. I got one more chance. Maybe I could get another critical here. Uh, if not, then I have to uh, take the sneak attack here on this attack. So might as well just take it. And yeah, at this point, <laughs> this fight is uh, basically over. So I hope you guys enjoyed the dual wield, dual crossbow hybrid build where you could essentially do melee or ranged attacks with this. And yeah, this build worked out so well in honor mode. So I hope that it finds uh, one of you some kind of use in your next playthrough. And yeah, uh, let me know if you have any other builds that you want to see. Give me some recommendations in the comments. I still enjoy making Baldur's Gate 3 builds. Uh, this game is still uh, a lot of fun even after so many hours that I put into it. But yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.